So who's scared of those manuals? I'm not, I'm more than terrified. Although they are easy on flat ground, they become tricky when you ollie into them. You could even get you flying into the air. Of course, getting used to putting your weight on your front foot itself is hard. But what you truly need to understand might be the human body's biological reflexes. You're watching Why the Trek, and we'll break down nose manual from a biomechanical perspective. Question: Where do you put your weight in a nose manual? On your toe? On your heel? Or you distribute it evenly? You can actually go straight by evenly applying pressure on your front foot and aligning the board's angle with the front trucks. Conversely, if you want to turn in one direction, you may lean in that direction and tilt your board in the same direction. So far, no problem, right? Now, let me change the question a bit. Which part of your body reaches the ground first when you jump and land? Generally, humans land on their toes first. By jumping, a body gains downward energy. And it tries to absorb such energy by landing on the toes first and stretching the calves. This is precisely what makes a nose manual challenging. While you should apply a horizontal force to the nose to balance it, reflexively, you tend to land on your toe first. Moreover, since this is a physiological reflex, flattening your foot when landing is not easy. So, if your toe tends to land first, should you place it over the front truck? Obviously, you shouldn't. If you place your weight on the spot, balancing will become more challenging. And the energy generated when landing will continue to push your weight down even after your toe touches your board. If this force deviates even slightly towards the hillside, it will push your board down in that direction, causing you to lose balance. For these reasons, you should place your front foot on the nose flatly so it covers the entire nose. But by doing so, your toe gets closer to the edge of the nose. In addition to this foot placement, when the physiological reflex kicks in, you may pressurize the nose too much and fall over. In order to solve this problem, let's first take a look at the anatomy of the ankle. There is a bone called the talus in the center of an ankle. This bone plays a vital role, as it transmits the body weight to the foot, and functions as a fulcrum to rotate the ankle. Theoretically, if there was no foot, the most effective way to support your body weight would be to have the talus directly above the truck. But in reality, it is your toe that usually touches the nose first to do the reflex. Meaning, the toe eventually pushes the nose down, and you have to find a way to counter it somehow. In order to offset the force of the toe lowering the nose, move your weight straight above the talus. Then, although your toe touches the nose first, you will transfer your weight on your heel, push your board to the heel side, and level it. So, where should you place a talus? In most cases, the talus should be placed close to the bolts, but you have to adjust it depending on your foot size. The most important thing is to level the board's angle by evenly distributing weight on the toe and heel size. 
Adjust the position and angle of the tailless bow depending on your foot size and weight. Another vital part is that even if the tailless bone is in the right place, balancing becomes difficult if you lean too far forward. Cause you'll be putting more weight on the toe side by leaning forward, and eventually land on the toe side upon locking into a manual. In that sense, a manual trick starts from approaching, and you have to be ready to move your weight above the tailless throughout the trick. Plus, theoretically, it'll be best if you kept your body axis straight. But sometimes you can't help leaning forward when trying an unfamiliar trick. At such times, try going into a nose manual while lightly turning to the heel side. While turning towards the heel side, your weight is also on the heel side, which should help you move your weight above the tailors more easily. And here are some common mistakes for those who have tried all of these and still can't make it work. Number 1. Avoid jumping too high. In many cases, you don't need to pop so high after all. You only need to let the front wheels get over the obstacle you are trying to do a manual. If you jump too high, the downward force when landing will increase, making it easier to lose balance. In order to figure out how hard you have to pop, try standing next to the obstacle you are skating on, and pop the tail. If the front wheels get over the obstacle, it's just as much as you need to pop. Generally, you should find you don't have to pop so much. Next mistake, not keeping your knees loose. By keeping your knees loose, you can use your knees and ankles to absorb the downward force upon landing. As before, make sure to move your weight directly above the tailors when landing. Lastly, this time, we mainly analyze the weight distribution in a nose manual according to biomechanics. However, there are some remaining questions, like do you pull the tail when you pop? Or what about the angle of the shoulders? We'll discuss these questions in the following video. And that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.